minute, John. He's still fixing the other. Right, that's it. Give us this. Yeah, so I better have that. Oh, it's open. Oh, right, John. No, no, no. I'm holding it for you. Come on. 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 No, we were, 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 we
they gained contracts to supply files for the Russian market. And down at Oliver Wheel fork making, <coughs> the thousands and thousands of forks that were made there would have found a worldwide market. And the Hallam brothers who occupied Butterthwaite Dam I mean, they, they had got gold medals from exhibitions in Paris and Melbourne for, th for all the wires and pins that they made, including hairpins and meat skewers and umbrella frames and bits and pieces of bicycles. God knows what. Fantastic. But there was a downside to all this. There were young children were employed. There was one lad working in the work in the fork workshops at Oliver Wheel and he was 14 and he'd been apprenticed at the age of 12 for nine years. This was in 1865. And he complained, he said, the master only hits me now and then when the work's not very good. And the, the man who wrote the report said that he was rubbing his eyes and spitting all the time because of the dust that he was inhaling. Think of how, how short a life he would have. Many grinders, the lifespan was 28 years. Staggering. Anyway, I'd also like to thank several people for the assistance that they've given us, particularly for uh, John, where's it gone? <laughs> who's coordinated the project and Tegwin Roberts of EPIP who smoothed our progress and gave the valuable advice thank you very much it's very noisy isn't it shall we unveil the plaque yeah. <laughs> so without more ado I'm glad I do to do it oh. allowed us to use this stained glass window from Hatfield House Methodist Church as an illustration it shows fort makers in the area so and I hope you'll enjoy looking at this and at the accompanying leaflet thank you thank you, thank you very much Yeah, it's gone. Oh, right. Yes. 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 Just in case any of you were not down at the Morrison's or the park entrance, may I welcome you on behalf of the Ecclesfield Conservation Group and uh, we're doing the second ceremony as you probably gathered and then after that we'll all go up to the church for a cup of tea and coffee and the various other things to see the display. I welcome you all and without further ado I'm going to hand you over to Mel, our historian and person who, uh, with his wife Joan who've done all the research into this marvellous project. Thank you all, the rest of you, in case any of you are not going to the church, for your support. It's a good turnout, and we're delighted to see you and for your support in that way. So, Mel, sure. All right, man. Do you want me to do it? Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> you can do that, yeah. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, right. <coughs> <coughs> right. This is uh, 
information board number two and leaflet number two and this covers the area from Whitley Hall <coughs> down to the old Rowland site and then up Nether Lane to Smithy Wood and again it, it's ridiculous how much her industrial heritage there is I mean next time you go for a lunch or dinner or a wedding reception at Whitley Hall just think that all the water features in the grounds were once the ponds for scythe making works that ran for a hundred years from 1487 and next time you go pause just in front of the doorway where there are big troughs full of plants they're not plant troughs at all they're what are called coal troughs and in the 15th century they've been filled with cold water for the side mather to plunge his blades into them to cool them fantastic and the other thing is that in the rest of the Whitley Valley on a calm day you'd have heard the clangs of hammers on iron and steel all the way through the valley in 1841 58 out of the 78 men and boys who lived in the Whitley Valley were nail makers, file makers, fork makers or cutlery handle makers. Only a few people were farmers. And then when you come down, you come to the big pond behind the former working men's club. And that was the corn mill for Ecclesfield Priory. And it was there before the Priory was built. And later on, they made such products as cotton, flax, thread, rope, paper. And it was a paper mill for the last 50 years until 1907. And I mean, they made all sorts of stuff there. They made paper bags. They made the, the boards for book binding. And they even made paper neckties and scarves. And they're pretty good. It's looks authentic, <laughs> doesn't it? I've got one. Yeah, got it. <laughs> and then we go on to the, the, the Roland site, which was a, a corn mill for over 300 years until 1924 and the old stone building that they've left standing was part of the old corn mill so next year when you're buying your bread in Aldi's remember the 300 years of flour making on that site and then the leaflet takes you on Nether Lane to where the Hydra Iron and Steel Works were gone now but everybody will remember the trademark of a striding man rolling up his sleeves the go to it hydra man and then right at the end of nether lane of course was smithywood coking plant that was there from 1929 until 1987 and that made not only coke but gas tar benzo and if you remember it was attached to the Thorncliffe Ironworks by an aerial ropeway. And there's an aerial ropeway from Rockingham Colliery at Birdwell all the way to the Ironworks. And about ten years ago we interviewed the, the man, the late Elijah Ranfield, who was in charge of the team who put <coughs> up the aerial ropeway between Smithywood and Thorncliffe Ironworks. And years later, when they decided to take them down, he was called into his boss's office and his boss looked him in the eye and he said, that put them up, that and take them down. <laughs> and there's this fantastic heritage. Uh, and we've tried to get all this into the leaflets and the information board. Uh, as at the 
other one, I'd like to thank various people again. John and Ted Wynn I've already thanked. And I'd also like to thank Craig Branson of PB Graphics on Station Road for designing the leaflet and seeing it through the printing process. And without the help of various people giving us information as well, then these things couldn't have been done. Thank you very much. Without more ado... Thank you very much. So I ended up with, as I say, it's cost me £99 again, but she said, if it's the same... Being caught stuffing my face. You didn't catch me last year stuffing my face, I don't think. this morning for your support for a few other special people not least of all Mel and Joan for the research Jim for a tremendous amount of work of communicating to people along with that Ian Deans who was doing our photography rushing around John as ever for a lot of labor work in that way Peter for setting me on the road in his incapacity for coordinating everything the support we've had from Ecclesfield, parish councillors, for your support today. Vic at the back there, Steve Wilson, where is he? Uh, we've seen them in there. Any councillors I haven't mentioned, 
And above all, and last but not least, if I've left anybody else out, do remind me, I've got to thank the ladies in the kitchen for looking after this <laughs> splendid thing. I've got to thank East Peaks with our industrial heritage, without Tegwin's help, this wouldn't have been possible. The funding coming from the English Heritage, DEFRA, East Peak, and coordinating all together and running backwards and forwards. I've got to thank our suppliers, all right, for the, the, the materials that were supplied, the artists and such like in that way. And last but not least, I've got to thank Eric Ayres, who stood at the back there, who provided this lovely buffet this morning. If I if I've forgotten anyone, please, I'm sorry. There's so many other names of research workers of thing that are on the leaflets anyway in that way. And I've got to thank my dear wife as well, Mo. For <laughs> uh, in that way, I didn't when really. When he says I'll send you an email, <laughs> <laughs> Maury does it. I, you know, I have tech. I have techno I have technophobia with it. I'm not, you know, in that sort of situation. But anyway, once again, thanks. I'm not throwing you out because there's still some good food here to be had. And help yourself. But I, I needed to say it before everybody left. Please. If you feel like joining us in 2013, we'd be delighted. Some of you may have heard that we are changing the name slightly. We are going to be known in the new year as Ecclesfield Conservation Group and Local History Society. That was a, a vote at the, the last meeting, and we shall instigate that in the new year. I think that widens the interest. Of, we've done, heard some magnificent stuff of the industrial history, but there's some family history, there's some human things to do with Ecclesfield, and we could do with some new members to jolly it along. So we if you're every, interested... We meet every third Thursday of the month. Tuesday. Third, sorry, Tuesday. Monday. Monday. You get it right. <laughs> In the stocks, public house at half past seven. Third, hear that again. We'll get it now. The third Monday in every month. But not this December, we've taken one off. There's too many other things going on. Thanks again, everybody, for your time and support. And thanks to my gang for their support to me during this year. It's actually been well over a year in putting all this together. And I'm going to relax this afternoon and watch the rugger. <laughs> thanks, everybody.